for that kind introduction and it's always a pleasure to come to ludhiana this is my second time and whenever dr dhami calls you can't say no to him like all of us so thank you so much for having me here on on the international women's day when i'm going to be talking here it's 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 truly an honor and a and a pleasure i would be talking to you about decision making in refractive surgery and sial deck touch up on the back this place now i think uh, The, the, the refractive surgeries that are currently available to us are cornea based, lens based, and when you combine both of them, uh, it is bioptics. Uh, the uh, laser based refractive surgeries, either you can use examen laser with the surface ablation or micro keratome. I'm sure a uh, lot of us are still using uh, micro keratome, and of course it can be done with a femtosecond uh, laser. And the latest way is the fla- to be flapless with a smile. Now the the dilemmas that are there in uh, once mind is is the patient suitable for refractive surgery and which surgery is uh, best for the patient now as far as the fda is concerned uh, the surface ablation and lasik have been approved from minus 10 diopter sphere to plus 4 diopter uh, sphere and uh, 4 diopter cylinder smile from minus 1 to minus 8 sphere and of course the astigmatism uh, astigmatism limits have also been increased and hy- fake chiros for hyperopia Plus three to plus ten and myopia minus three to minus twenty and six diopters of cylinder and refractive lens exchange. I'm not fond of this procedure very much, but it can be done for all ranges and would essentially also be guided uh, uh, by the age of the patient. So the uh, ideal candidate uh, for LASIK and PRK, uh, the age limit has to be at least eighteen years, and this is again approved by FDA. FDA for ICL and spire, the patient has to be at least twenty one years. Uh, the refractive error has to be stable. Uh, patient should not be pregnant or breastfeeding. No systemic or autoimmune disease. Adequately counselled and no history of ocular comorbidities. Of course, there are absolute contraindications like corneal ectasias and unstable refractive error. And then there are relative contraindications like dry eye, diabetes mellitus, or EBMD, or keloid formation, or medications like amodrin and isotretinoin. Isotri- the preoperative workup has been done in terms of ocular examination and the clinical investigations which are uh, uh, there for the refractive surgery uh, uh, sir talked about the corneal topography and one needs to identify these at risk corneas first to make a decision whether you are going to treat them or not and again this is again my most favorite slide to uh, determine the same so the anterior elevation map shows more than 12 microns and posterior elevation shows more than 17 microns then these are at risk corneas and the corneal thickness should be more than 500 microns and again pecky affects to the uh, tn if it is more than 10 microns and uh, y coordinate at thinnest location is more than 500 microns then these are again at high risk Uh, of course, keratometry has to be looked at. Should be uh, if it is more than 48, and the difference between the two eyes is more than two, or uh, uh, the skewing is more than 21, or inferior superior asymmetry is more than 1.4 diopters. Then again, one has to be careful by uh, whether these case patients are going to be taken up for refractive surgery or not. And this has been talked about, so I will not dwell on this. Uh, the bad and the ART. Now, which surgery is most suitable for the patient? I think there are certain factors. One is the uh, residual back thickness, which should be more than 300 microns. The PTA, about which there was a lot of hype, but essentially should be less than 40 percent. And the keratometry should be between 34 and 48. And if the post-op keratometry is going to be outside this range, then we uh, defer uh, refractive surgery. And then, depending on this, either corneal-based surgery is uh, planned. However, if the RSBT is less than 300 microns, PTA is more than 40 percent, and post-op keratometry is going to be outside the range of 34 and 48, then one would perform a lens-based surgery. And if the refractive error is very high, then of course bioptics would be done. Then again, for low to moderate uh, grades of myopia, surface ablation is done. LASIK can be done for moderate and uh, high grades of myopia, and SMILE again for low, moderate, and high grades of myopia. the the limitation of spine is uh, the astigmatism and i'm sure they are now working up on softwares for this 
Now, whenever there are higher order operations, if it is less than 0.3 microns, then one goes in for wavefront optimized LASIK. But if it is more than that, then wavefront guided LASIK. And if there are corneal irregularities, then a topo guided LASIK can also be done. So essentially, this is the decision tree which has been uh, highlighted. The patient has good visual acuity, good night vision with a good visual acu acuity good visual quality then wavefront optimized LASIK is the way to go but if the wave if the wavefront measurement is possible and the RMS is more than 0 0.4 then one goes in for wavefront guided ablation otherwise it is wavefront optimized ablation and if the topography is regular then again wavefront optimized ablation and if it is not then a topo guided ablation has to be done now just one word about uh, this topo guided LASIK or Contura, it, it treats at the corneal plane, it, it, it takes care of the peripheral uh, corneal irregularities as well and it is centered on the corneal vertex rather than the pupil center and is not dependent upon the pupil size. Uh, so the topo guided ablation profile would be uh, different from the wavefront guided ablation profile and that has to be looked into in some of the cases. Now coming to the case studies, now uh, two. So, uh, if you look at the fellow eye again, the bad is uh, borderline. So these, this case perhaps uh, would be, it is best to observe and reassess for stability of the tropography after six months. Now case scenario two is this uh, 21 year old male and we get a lot of them and I'm sure all of us would be getting uh, because of occupational reasons. And again the thinnest, uh, the refractive error is quite low, minus one uh, sphere and minus 1.25 uh, sphere respectively with the pachymetry which is good and keratometry also which is good but because it is uh, armed forces then and the refractive error is low you can perhaps even do a surface ablation as well. Now this is uh, another case uh, 24 year old male who has come for cosmetic reasons so it is important to know what, what is the reason the patient has come for with minus 4 uh, sphere and cylinder uh, in both the eyes and the RSVT the residual keratometry and the percentage tissue ablation allows you to do uh, LASIK. Now this is another case uh, with a refractive error of minus 8 diopter sphere in one eye and minus 7.5 in the other eye and if you look at the RSBT at 110 microns uh, it is okay but the percentage tissue ablation is just borderline. So if you do a 100 micron flap however uh, you fall into the area when the PTA is also less and look at uh, these maps as well so perhaps to plan a femtolicic with a 100 micron uh, flap would be a better idea. Now this is yet another case uh, where uh, 19 year old male patient with minus 3.25 sphere uh, in one eye and minus 4.25 sphere in the other eye with a pachymetry which is not that great but RSBT and PTA allow you to do uh, the uh, procedure. So you could do femtolicic or you could even do smile and I think what needs to be done is then to look at the economics if the patient is able to afford then we do smile otherwise a femtolicic is the other option that can be given. Now if a patient is for instance like this is a football player with a refractive error of minus 5 in one eye and minus 5.25 in the other eye and uh, uh, all the parameters are okay then you can perhaps do a smile procedure in this case. And this is yet another case where all the parameters are okay but the Schirmer is low. So these cases that is best to start on lubricants and topical cyclosporin and reassess uh, after 6 months and counsel for smile. Uh, this is uh, yet another case where RSBT and percentage tissue ablation don't allow you to do a, a LASIK procedure and in this case patient can be counseled for uh, ICL and of course we have to look at the AC depth uh, uh, to see that uh, ICL is possible or not. Uh, so there can be uh, several uh, case, scen case scenarios uh, such as this and uh, I would like to show you this case which is a very high refractive error. And again in this case one can plan by optics, that is you, you elevate the LASIK flap and then uh, uh, you put it back, then do a, uh, do a fake eye and then correct the residual refractive error on the LASIK flap. Now again the combinations could be with the LASIK ICL or with the PRK ICL. And uh, again uh, this is a case, a 40 year old female if she is highly motivated then one can perhaps do uh, refractive lens exchange because the uh, endo ACD or the RSBT does not allow you to do LASIK or ICL. Uh, again this is a both high astigmatism which is a pure cylinder so you have to again look at the maps 
and the posterior elevation is raised, the K max is raised. So one has to avoid ablative procedures in these cases. And again, uh, this is the case uh, when uh, the toric uh, ICLs can be planned because of high refractive error and the toricity. So to conclude, refractive surgery has evolved significantly and the platforms are advancing and we do require, uh, uh, we do require uh, uh, future studies as well to uh, determine uh, more, in, more in terms of diagnostics because whatever the data that has been given to us in Pentachem is the data which is given from the western literature, not in the Indian eyes and they are still collecting data from the Indian eyes. Uh, and uh, what we extrapolate is what has already been told to us from the Western eyes. So that is something that we need to look at. Thank you for your kind attention. Active surgery when they are on treatment. If anybody else has any experience on doing treatment with the hormonal therapy. I just had a comment ma'am. The 14 scenarios that you presented look so interesting. I wish you could have spent some more time on each of them. It was so, so hurried and fast because I think we had a lot of questions on each case. So, Dr. Dhami, please do have to eliminate 50% of your patients because they are either yellow or red. Um, and then the whole presumption that uh, keratoconus starts on the back surface of the cornea, I think that is wrong. Because if you look at the histopathology, it's basically a fibrillation of the Bowman's membrane and uh, the uh, ectasia starts on the front surface, it's reflected on the back surface, but you can't see it very clearly on the front surface because the epithelium is a smoothing agent and that kind of makes up for the slight bulge on the anterior surface, so you see it more on the posterior surface. And so it's very important to look at epithelial maps and that's what we do, we are looking now routinely, we do epithelial thickness maps and if there is like a yellow on a bad or a red, Sometimes then, they get, yeah. then you look at the epithelial maps and epithelial maps are perfectly normal, then we go ahead and do it. So I think that is just the comment I want to do. So that's a, that's a very useful uh, suggestion. Very nice presentation ma'am. Uh, thanks a lot for coming all the way to Ludhiana. So, uh, ablation zones, you know, when uh, microcaratoma had come way back in 1996 or 98 at that time. But nowadays I don't think we, we don't order ablation zones. Because it will be sick, so like that's what you uh, No, if you alter the ablation zone, the only thing is if you make it smaller, then your RSBT would, you know, increase. But then we don't do it. No, as of now, we don't. Of course, in the past, we all have done uh, myopias, more than minus 12 diopters also, with optic zones which are much smaller. So what is your standard optical zone nowadays? That is already 6.5. Um, thank you, ma'am. I would